Oh, good evening. Um, tonight, I'm going to teach you about green schools. Uh, my name is Cliff Ashburner. I'm the immediate past chair of USGBC Kentucky. I'm going to teach you eight words that I want you to leave this room with. Um, and I'm going to try to make you guess the eight words before we get there. Um, first, what is a green school? Well, a green school, of course, is a green building. And what are green buildings? Green buildings are buildings that are appropriately cited. They're energy efficient. They're water efficient. They use recycled materials, and they recycle the materials that come through them. Uh, and they also have a high degree of indoor environmental quality. What can green buildings do? Well, they can do a lot. As you can see, they reduce water use by 40 percent. They can reduce energy use by 25 to 50 percent, and in some cases, much more. They reduce solid waste. Um, LEED buildings, LEED certified buildings, have really been adopted uh, in the office market because the indoor environmental quality also helps with worker productivity. So what's a green school? A school creates a healthy learning environment that's conducive to learning while saving energy resources and money. And after all, a school is really a special purpose office building with very precious workers. And so we want to take care of them. Um, I'll talk briefly about four aspects of green schools, two of which are mitigation, two of which are aspiration. Energy efficiency and water efficiency, indoor air quality, and curriculum and environmental education. All right, this is a schematic of Richardsville uh, Elementary School. It's in Warren County. It is a net zero school, and as you can see, uh, it uses a lot of what's around it. Kentucky is an ag state, which means, like it or not, we're a solar state. And they use solar tubes, they use daylighting, they use a lot of solar to generate energy. You can see there as well about $224,000 a year in energy savings. Um, the building itself is very efficient. It uses about a third of the energy of a typ typical code compliant building, which makes it net zero. It currently generates more than it uses and it teaches the students through exposure to these building systems about what goes into them. The Clinical and Translational Research Building here in downtown Louisville is a LEED Gold certified project. Uh, it's an NIH certified um, research facility and it uses 42.5% less water than a code compliant building, which is very impressive. It actually irrigates its landscaping with condensate from its air conditioning units. So energy saved plus water saved comes back to money. That's the mitigation part. And how much money? Well, the average green school saves about $100,000 per year. And $100,000, <clears> as you can imagine, would be one free teacher, uh, 5,000 books. Um, in the case of Richardsville Elementary, the savings are enough to buy each student an iPad every year. So it's, it's quite impressive. In addition to savings, green schools produce a healthier learning environment. About 20% of the nation's schools have unhealthy air in them. And every year, 14 million school days are missed because of poor indoor air quality. Uh, VOCs can trigger asthma symptoms, and so removing them from the learning environment is key. And this, I thought, was um, very interesting. Teachers lose about two days a year to sore throats from having to speak over building systems. Um, so we need quieter places for our kids to learn. Indoor air quality goes up, absenteeism goes down, you get a better product out of the same building, better learning environment. So um, why does the USGBC care about schools in particular? We are about greening the entire built environment. Well, not every county has a U of L. Not every county has a brand new elementary school. Not every county has lots of office buildings that have been developed to the latest design standards. But every single county has a school in it. And we intend to put a green school in every single county in the next 20 years. We've got a head start. You can see here these are mostly Energy Star schools. By doing that, just think of the people we reach. About one in six Kentuckians every school day goes into a school building. Most of those are kids. And so by reaching into every single county, we're able to put a boot on the ground throughout the entire state and hopefully affect change all the way through. 
We do that through efforts like the Mayor's Alliance. The last time I was in this room with Mayor Fisher, he was signing the Mayor's Alliance, signing on to the task force. We really appreciated that. And we want to get to kids because kids are stubborn. Kids see things simply. And uh, instead of reinventing the wheel, we thought about what would, what would the evil people do? What would McDonald's do? <laughs> McDonald's sells chicken nuggets so they can get mom and dad in the door. Uh, and so they can get you thinking about their food. And getting back to kids being stubborn, of course, once we get to the kids, we'll eventually get to the parents. This is on the North Carolina, South Carolina border. Uh, keep yelling, kids, they'll stop. And of course, once we get to the grown-ups in the community, once we have that school teaching the whole community, we'll get to the folks here who have the purse strings, who will make a difference, who will help us change the world in our part of the world. How have we done that? We've created the Green Schools Caucus. It's a bipartisan-led effort in the House. We've proposed green cleaning legislation, funding for efficient buildings, and supported lots of other environmentally um, conscious bills. We've also gone out into the community and done service projects. We took part in the Green Apple Day of Service. This was an international effort last year. We did a project in Louisville. We also did a project in Lexington. We touched 49 counties, all 50 states. Every USGBC chapter was involved. And here are your eight words. Every green school comes with two free teachers. Thank you. <laughs>